Hi, this is Charlie Fankin. I hope you're enjoying the Fruit Park YouTube channel. So again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ian's friendship with uh, Kenny Fletcher went back uh, 60 years. Uh, and at the end of the previous uh, YouTube, we were talking about, or well, starting to talk about, uh, some doubles matches that uh, the both of them played. Now, I'm deadly keen to find out whether you actually won your match, and if you didn't, who beat you? Yes, Peter, on, on this particular occasion, occasion uh, uh, I teamed up with, uh, with Ken uh, in the Age Championships of Junior, junior Boys Doubles. And what year would that have been? Oh, we're going back to the early 50s, it'd be 52, 53 yeah. in that era. And uh, yes, we, uh, we got through a couple of rounds, but uh, then we came across uh, Gary Balsh and his partner. Now, uh, Gary, uh, I think he, you know, memory sort of recalls that he did come in from the country. And uh, I really haven't heard a lot about Gary since that. But he was I, obviously a very good player. He was, yeah. I think, uh, if I can remember, I think he did go on to play in the Australian Open on several occasions. So, um, you know, I think you've got to realise too that at that early age, um, basically, um, we all had good ground strokes. Mm. We all knew how to serve and uh, volley and, and uh, play good, hard tennis uh, ac accurately. And uh, there was very little difference, I guess, in, in our play, but it just depends on, on probably who made mistakes and who didn't. And also going back to the previous YouTube as to how dedicated the coaches were. That's right, yeah, they had a lot to do with it. But uh, talking a little bit about uh, Ken, yes, he was extremely competitive. And I think those that came up against him would, would have realised that. And, of course, his achievements have shown just how competitive that he really was. And but, but liked a good time at the same time. He did like a good time. And perhaps I can relate back to Yu Lung's book. Yep. Yeah, where he, uh, you know, uh, we were going through a certain age and uh, we did take notice of, of young ladies or girls in those days. And uh, I think you mentioned in his book, um, Jossie England or Jocelyn England. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I went to school with Jocelyn at the convent at Holland Park. And also another name that came up that uh, I think Ken was uh, a little bit keen on was uh, Margaret McKenna. And uh, Margaret uh, eventually turned out very close friends uh, with Keith and the McKenna family did. Yeah. Um, Anyhow, um, yeah, so uh, that was the association uh, with Hugh Lund's book. But uh, with Hugh himself, uh, I got to know Hugh through Ken, actually. Um, uh, Hugh and his brother Jackie, they used to go to Gregory Terrace College in Brisbane, and they used to catch the bus at times, the 5C or 5B, out to, uh, well, it'd go through uh, past the stop where the St Lawrence boys got on, out to Angley Junction. And uh, uh, through Ken, uh, that's how I, I really got to know, uh, to know you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing actually. A lot of commentators in the tennis world uh, who have an interest in biographies uh, and autobiographies um, have ranked Hugh's book, and there's like three or four people who've done this, as one of the best three on the tennis world uh, and it's just it's quite incredible so it's not only a great story uh, on Kenny Fletcher Kenny Fletcher a great tennis player but it's also then a background a great story teller uh, picking up the threads of a great period of tennis in Australia so look, Brisbane is, is incredibly blessed not only with great tennis players but with a great uh, um, uh, author that's right yeah and I think you must be congratulated for that too, you know, for the time and uh, the research that he must have put in to get that information about Ken. I realise that they were good friends over the years, but I, th I think uh, it still takes quite a, a bit of research to present a book the way that he did. It's, uh, yes, I did actually try to convince Hugh to write a book on the tennis history of, of Milton. 
and he shook his head in horror at the research that would have to uh, be undertaken. But he has uh, thrown him, himself into uh, the YouTubes. Uh, uh, the ones with Mel Anderson are just fantastic. Uh, and he's really looking forward to when we uh, when I catch up again with uh, Ashley Cooper. So it's uh, it's a real joy to work with uh, with you because he knows so much more than uh, than uh, what uh, I even remotely could know. Yes, I noticed that uh, he and Sally have, have talked a lot about the trams in mm. Brisbane, and uh, I can probably relate a little bit about you know trams um, with Mum and and of course. Uh, uh, me not being of school age, uh, I used to travel around to Mum's various uh, tennis venues, and of course uh, in those days the, the tram was there, and uh, I guess uh, tennis courts were my second home. Uh, in those days, I spent so much time uh, uh, watching tennis, and uh, to get to those places where we had to use the trams. Mm, no, it was a, a unique. Uh time in uh, Brisbane's history. And with that, uh, we may say uh, good morning again, and thank you for, uh, for watching. One of the very special features of Brisbane, as I remember it, back in the 50s and the 60s, was the tram. One of the great things about the tram was you could always hear it coming, so you didn't miss it because you could hear it coming bang, 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 along the street. Um, it was a very convenient way to travel because you could jump on it and jump off it. And of course it was great for Milton because the tram went along right beside Milton and you could jump off and go into the, um, in, 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 into the tennis um, centre there. So I thought it was a very sad day when we lost our trams at the end of the 60s.